The six-month deal struck between Iran and the West in Geneva signifies a real breakthrough in stopping Iran's nuclear development program. Under the agreed terms, Iran will hold enrichment of uranium above 5% purity. The country will also neutralize its stockpile of near 20% enriched uranium. But while the agreement is only a stepping stone towards a more comprehensive deal in half a year's time, the world hopes that it'll help secure peace in the Middle East. I met with Michael Mann, the spokesperson for the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Catherine Ashton, who was also in Geneva during the negotiations. Well, I mean, it was extremely intensive. It started really with a, a session on uh, Wednesday lunchtime and lasted through until 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. So, And it really was intensive. I mean, my boss, the high representative, Catherine Ashton, was involved in the negotiation process right from the beginning and all the way through. Did that intensity pay off? Did the Baroness achieve the goals that she went in there to get? Yes. I mean, what we had in hand was the chance for the first time to reach an agreement with Iran after more than a decade of unsuccessful discussions. Um, we have reached a first step agreement, an initial agreement, which is the first time Iran in more than a decade has agreed to suspend its uh, nuclear program. And of course, we now also have a framework for the final comprehensive agreement that has supposed to be negotiated after the next six months. So I would say it's an enormous success. And do you feel that another deal can be reached in six months' time? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough, of course, but um, we, we wouldn't go into it if we weren't confident we could get a result. This is a similar sentiment felt by senior MEP Charles Tannock, a member of the European Union's Committee on Foreign Affairs, although Tannock's optimism is also accompanied with caution. We must give peace and diplomacy a chance. It's not a matter of trusting the Iranians. I'm, I know that deep down they've always wanted to have a nuclear weapon. We've managed to frustrate them in that by very, very strong... Uh, smart sanctions. It's an example of EU uh, common foreign security policy sanctions working well. The negotiations have been heralded as a success. However, both sides are using the word retractable in their victory speeches. Does that not negate the deal? No, it just shows that uh, there is no mutual trust. Uh, I think we have to accept that. But this is not about, uh, you know, you can only make peace with your enemy. I think it was one uh, senior Israeli politician. And the one thing we all don't want is a war. The European Union might be singing praise for the nuclear deal, but Israel is far from celebrating what its Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, calls a historic mistake. I asked the Director of EU Affairs for Benai Brith International, Nuno Wahun Martins, why Netanyahu opposes the deal. There is no trust in uh, the previous negotiations with Iran. And despite the fact that the Iranian um, president changed, the regime is still led by the religious council. But isn't an Iran without nuclear weapons a step in the right direction? Of course it is. If it will be different, like let's, before 1979, there was a deal between Israel and between the, the Shah government. The question is today. We cannot trust them, and the Western countries could not do this right now. Most of the world will hail these negotiations as proof that diplomacy still can work on the world stage. However, that is a notion that will be tested in six months' time once again. But until then, politicians will hope that Iran's intentions are true, rather than playing a sinister game that Israel fears so much. This is Bjarke Smith-Meyer for JN1 at the European Parliament in Brussels.